One of the most important things you could do before starting in medical school, or starting any degree for that matter, is getting a good studying technique down. The problem is lots of students will be able to get through high school, get the grades and then get into medical school without really ever having to think about how they're going about their studying. The problem is when you're in medical school, you're no longer spoon fed information by your teachers. Instead, the responsibility to study lies solely with you. This is why it's important you take a minute to figure out a good studying technique for you. Essentially, you need to learn how to learn. The problem is there's lots of studying technique advice out there, whether that's through YouTube, through the internet or through speaking to other students. However, a lot of this won't be evidence-based in this video, I'm going to talk about a particular method of studying known as interleaving, which is evidence-based, but it does contrast what most students typically do when they're studying. In this video, I'm going to compare and contrast interleaving versus blocking. So let's begin this with an example. You're in your third year of medical school. You've got your end of year exams coming up. Everything you've learned that year can come up in your exams and everything in the two years before it can also come up in your exams as well. Now that's pretty daunting. Now what I used to do when I was in medical school was I would go, right, I've got this exam coming up. Let's take it a topic at a time, a specialty at a time. So what I used to do is I used to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll do cardiology. Then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll do respiratory. Then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I'll do gastroenterology and then so on and so on and so on. You get the idea. I was basically taking it one specialty or one subject at a time. I would keep going through that specialty until it was ingrained in my head, until I felt at the end of it, I was really confident. I knew everything I needed to know about that one specialty. And then once I did that, I would move on to the next one. And this is a process known as blocking. However, there are some flaws with blocking or masked practices that's known in the book, Make It Stick. Blocking can give you the illusion that you've learned a topic really well and that gives you a lot of confidence and it also means you've learned that information in a relatively short period of time. However, for most students, they'll forget that information just as quickly as they've learned it. Now let's take this calendar for an example. If I study cardiology in the first and second of the month and I've got my exam at the end of the month, it's a long time to not be thinking about cardiology. This problem is compounded by Ebenhaus' forgetting curve. Now this is a concept which basically explains that when you learn information, you quickly forget it as soon as you finish learning it. So there's quite a steep curve. And the only way to overcome this curve is by going over the information again. But like I just said, in all likelihood, that's gonna mean that I've forgotten the information that I need to know about cardiology. So how can you overcome the problems related to blocked practice? Well, this is where interleaving comes into it. Interleaving is the idea that you study two or more concepts, skills, or topics at the same time. Now going back to the book, Make It Stick, they give an example of this. So they take two groups of students and they get the students to learn how to calculate the volume of some really obscure shapes. So they made to calculate a spheroid, a cone, a wedge, and half a cone. Basically, the first group are given a set of practice questions where they'll initially do a bunch of questions on calculating a wedge volume, then a cone volume, then half a cone volume, and then a spheroid volume. So they're, they're all itemized out. Whereas the second group then go on to do the same questions and they have them all jumbled up. So essentially, they'll answer a question about a wedge and then they'll do one about half a cone and then a spheroid and then back to a wedge. You get the idea. It's all jumbled up and this is what's known as interleaving. The first group got an average score of 80%. So that was the group that actually did the block practice. Whereas the second group, the interleave group, well, they scored 67%. So you're now probably thinking, didn't you just tell me interleaving was better? Well, I'll come on to that now. So the two groups went away for a week. Then they came back. They were made to do these calculations again, different sets of questions, but based on the exact same thing, calculating the volumes of these obscure shapes. Now the blocked practice group scored an average of 20% after a week. Whereas the interleave practice group, they scored 63% they actually were able to retain the information a lot better. That does highlight the fact that although interleaving is more difficult and more challenging at first, you're more likely to retain the information when compared with blocked practice. Now let's apply this to my medical school example. Initially, I'd said I'd study cardiology for a couple of days, then move on to respiratory, then move on to gastroenterology. But why not change it around a bit? Why not study cardiology in the morning, then study respiratory in the afternoon, and then get gastroenterology in the evening, then study respiratory the following morning, and then add in endocrinology in the afternoon, and then study cardiology in the evening, and then continue mixing the subjects up. You can add neurology on the Wednesday, and then a bit more respiratory and a bit more cardiology. Essentially, interleave your subjects. Now, initially, that can feel quite challenging, it'll feel a lot more difficult if you're swap swapping from one topic to the next in a relatively short period of time. You might have felt like you've just got atrial fibrillation down in your cardiology topic and then you've been moved on to pulmonary embolisms and respiratory. You have been forced to switch 
despite the fact you, you feel like you're just getting to grips with the concept. And this will make you want to spot back to block practice. You'll want to continue on with what, you're, what you feel like you're getting to grips with. But it's actually this challenge and this difficulty that's helping you learn and retain the information. There's also an additional benefit to interleave practice. It helps you distinguish between different topics and link them together. Now this works well in medicine. So although there are lots of different unique specialties, ophthalmology, cardiology, respiratory, general surgery, or whatever, they do overlap. Very rarely do you get a patient who comes in with one singular problem and has no past medical history. There's no overlap with anything else. It's really important that you learn how to distinguish different symptoms and signs and having an understanding of how different specialties overlap can help you do this. For example, if you get a patient who's come in with heart failure, which is a cardiology topic, they might have developed a pleural effusion, which is technically part of respiratory, but they also might have chronic kidney disease, which is a renal topic, and they all overlap. It's important that you start to link specialties together. To quote the book Powerful Teaching, interleaving boosts learning by mixing up closely related topics. This encourages discrimination between similarities and differences. Essentially, you're able to see where topics overlap, but also what makes them different from each other and when you're able to understand what makes them different from each other that's when you're able to apply that to a clinical scenario for example in the context of medicine. There's another additional benefit to interleaving. When you sit an exam and you've got a booklet an exam booklet with lots of different questions in it very rarely are they going to be blocked out by specialty or topic. You're not going to get the first page being cardiology then the second page being respiratory then gastroenterology. They're all going to be jumbled up. They're definitely not going to be in the order that you studied it specifically. This is where interleave practice comes into it. It's actually helping you sort of practice for your exam you're going to get lots of questions that are jumbled up. And that's why interleave practice can help you. If you study with the idea that things are going to be jumbled up, it'll help you when you get into your actual exam. You're essentially preparing yourself to face questions in a random order. And as Pumilia et al. 2020 put it, whilst interleaving appears to make learning harder, it appears that increasing the difficulty from a learner's perspective leads to a stronger long-term retention. Basically, if you make it more challenging when you learn the information, you're more likely to not forget it in the future. You retain that information. And at the end of the day, that's what you want. If you're trying to study for an exam, you want to be able to remember what you learned a month ago so you, you can apply it in an examination context. And this specifically applies to professional courses. You need to remember what you've learned because then you're going to have to apply it to your job in the future. If you're a medical student, for example, you're going to need to know about heart failure, like I said before, because you're going to need to apply that to your job later on. The whole point you learn learning this information is so you retain it and can apply it and work as a doctor. That's another reason why it's really important that you have a strategy in place which is going to help you retain the information you learn long term. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.